Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy, and in this video, we'll study a public goods contribution game and use it to explain the tragedy of the commons. A public good is one that everyone in society can use at the same time, and no one in society can be prevented from using. We say it is non-excludable and non-rival. Think of something like a street light. I can use its light, and you can use its light. Neither of us can prevent the other from using it, and its use by one of us does not prevent its use by the other of us. Okay, I guess one could build a giant box around oneself and the streetlight, just to make a point. Please don't go build a giant box around yourself and a streetlight, but if you do, please send me a picture. Cast your mind back to your fond plebe summer log PT memories. Each of you exerted some effort. You only felt the physical strain of your own exertion while you benefited from the collective exertion of you and your fellow plebes, in that you successfully lifted a heavy log. Player little n's payoff function captures these two important features of a public goods game. First, the sum of all players' efforts represents that player little n benefits from the total effort exerted collectively by all players. The negative quadratic term, minus en squared over two, represents that player little n feels only the cost of her own contribution. We'll find the Nash equilibria of this game and the socially optimal effort levels of this game. We'll explain why the social optimum and the Nash equilibrium effort levels are different, and then discuss why markets routinely underprovide public goods. As in the vaccination game, when item one asks for all Nash equilibria, we need to be sure to find both pure and mixed strategy Nash equilibria of the game. We'll start with the pure strategy Nash equilibria. Spoiler alert! There are no mixed strategy Nash equilibria. We will use little n as our representative player. The symmetry of this game means we can do all of the analysis for one player and then conclude that the remaining players use the same strategy in Nash equilibrium. We need to differentiate the objective function with respect to e little n to find player n's best response function. It can be a little tricky to do calculus through the sum, so let's first expand the sum. Now we are ready to differentiate. The derivatives of e1, e2, and so on with respect to e little n are all zero. The derivative of e little n with respect to e little n, however, is one. The derivative of minus e little n squared over two is minus e little n. When we set the derivative equal to zero, we change e little n to e little n star to denote that this is the effort level which maximizes player little n's payoff. We conclude that player little n's unique best response is the Nash equilibrium effort level, 1. The best response is completely independent of other players' respective effort levels. The Nash equilibrium effort level, 1, is the unique effort level that maximizes player little n's payoff, i.e. effort level 1 strictly dominates all other strategies. In other words, the game is solvable by iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, so this pure strategy Nash equilibrium is the unique Nash equilibrium of the game. Now we'll find the socially optimal effort levels, also referred to as the efficient effort levels. A social planner chooses all of the effort levels to maximize the total payoff of all players. Equivalently, the plebe summer detailer helpfully encourages you to lift more weight. We'll replace u little j with the expression for individual payoff functions given in the left-hand column. Now we'll untangle the sums. There is no j in the sum from 1 to big N of e little i, so summing that sum from j equals 1 to big N is equal to big N times the sum of the e little i. An exercise that will further help you convince yourself that these expressions are equal is to let big N equal 2 and write everything out. Now we are ready to differentiate. The social planner uses calculus to select an effort level for the representative player little n. The social planner decides that each individual must exert effort level big N. We see now that the Nash equilibrium effort and socially optimal effort are quite different. In particular, the Nash equilibrium effort is lower than the socially optimal effort. There are two ways to explain this divergence. Both explanations amount to the same thing. The first is to observe that player little n's selecting effort level 1 
is a best response to each of the other big n minus one players choosing the socially optimal left route. There are two ways to explain this divergence, and both explanations amount to the same thing. The first is to observe that player little n selection of effort level one is a best response to each of the other big n minus one players choosing the socially optimal effort level, big N. Another way to frame it is that the effort level one strictly dominates effort level big N. We know that a strictly dominated strategy is never played in Nash equilibrium. This divergence between the Nash equilibrium effort levels and the socially optimal effort levels is captured by the tragedy of the commons. Individually rational decisions result in under-provision of public goods relative to the socially optimal level. The quintessential example is individual farmers who voluntarily contribute too little to the upkeep of the town commons, resulting in overgrazing by their collective livestock. As we remarked earlier, one way to view the vaccination game is as a public good contribution game in which vaccination is the private contribution towards herd immunity, which is the public good. In this light, vaccination is a good example of a public goods problem which we have solved to some extent by social planning. Many states have laws more or less requiring vaccination in order to attend public school. The Navy acts as a social planner by mandating vaccination against certain diseases for every single member of the service. Thanks so much for watching this video about public good contribution. This video is our last video about static games of complete information. In the next video, we'll begin our discussion of dynamic games of complete information, starting with the extensive and tree forms.